Yo, welcome back to Business Morning. Reports from the National Pension Commission indicate that it had recovered the sum of 9.3 billion naira pension funds deducted from the salaries of workers that were not remitted by the employers under the compulsory pension scheme to the employees' respective retirement savings account. Now, the report also noted that the contributions of about 127,555 workers to the pension funds as of March this year are still outstanding. But the Fortum firms were said to have been fined to the tune of 348.8 million. Now, a lot of questions are actually coming up from this development, especially as they relate to the savings of future retirees. Now, before I bring in my next guest, we will listen to the Director General of the Pension Commission, Ms. Chinelu Anohu Amazu, who gave a breakdown of the fund's uh, modes of operation at an awareness meeting in Lagos some time ago. So far, the sum of 5.7 trillion naira pension assets in Nigeria can be traced to the contributions from over 7 million people in the country. Let's listen. The PLA 2014 provides for 18% of the employee's monthly emolument as a minimum rate of contribution under the CPS, which is made up of 10% by the employer and 8% by the employee. An employer may, however, elect to contribute the entire 18% on behalf of its employee. Furthermore, an employer is also obligated to deduct and remit the employee's pension contributions to his RSA through a pension fund custodian within seven days of payment of salary. And the PFA thereafter notifies the, P, uh, the PFC thereafter notifies the PFA within 24 hours of receipt of the contribution. The PRA 2014 also provides that an, every employer shall maintain life insurance policy in favor of its employees for a minimum of three times the total annual emolument of each employee. The holder of an RSA can only withdraw from his RSA upon retirement or attaining the age of 50 years, whichever comes later. Section 7 and 16 of the PRA 2014 stipulates that the payment of retirement benefits shall be either, be either through a program withdrawal, which is offered by the PFAs, or purchase a life annuity from the life insurance people are licensed by the NICOM. The Commission, as a regulator of all pension matters in Nigeria, has established institutional frameworks to facilitate the uh, successful implementations of the PRA. In this regard, the pension operators who have been licensed to carry out these functions are 21 in number, and there are four pension fund custodians and seven close pension fund administrators. There is no doubt that in the 12 years of operation, the CPS has gained public confidence and acceptability as a result of which 7.13 million people, employees from both the public and private sector have opened retirement savings accounts. This is made up of 46%, which is 3 million 339 um, for the, pop, uh, for the public sector and 3,776,000, which is 53% of the private sector. Therefore, we will agree with me that the potential for growth of the scheme is very high, especially with more registrations expected from the state as well as the private and informal sectors. The value of the pension fund assets has grown from 265 billion in 2006, which was the year of actual commencement of investment activities, to 5.74 trillion as of June 30th of June 2016. The pool of pension funds and assets generated by the CPS has aided the deepening of the Nigerian financial sector and the economy in general. The increasing relative importance of the pension sector is reflected. Okay, that was the Director General of the 
National Pensions Commission, Ms. Chinelo Anohu Amazu. Now, Dr. Andrew Nevin is advisory partner and chief economist at Waterhouse Coopers, and he joins me in the studio to take a look at issues in the pensions market, especially as it relates to the contributory pension scheme. Good morning, Good morning Dr. Nevin. Thank here. you for coming on the program. I'm sure you're listening to uh, the DG of the Pensions uh, Commission, and she mentioned that payment for you know pensioners should be made seven days after salaries have been paid. But that seems not to be the case as we have months down the line, some of these pensions were not remitted to the various custodians and those who are administrating them. What's your view on this very well, disturbing situation? I mean, I think the DG is, is exactly right. And I think the fines and the people who have late remitting, they, they have to remit, they have to get fined, they have to come into compliance. I mean, if you deduct from an employee's uh, uh, salary to contribute to the pension and they don't, don't then put it into their pension, you've in fact stolen that money. That's a criminal offense. If you don't remit the part that the company is supposed to owe, that's a civil offense. So, you know, it's part of whether it's the tax system or the pension system, corporations in this country have to come into line with all the guidelines. And mm -hmm. it's incredibly important for the individual. I mean, the one great thing about the pension scheme is at least the individual can track it because you're getting a monthly alert. You know if your company has taken the money from you but not put it into your pension. So it's more and more difficult for companies to not, not do the right thing. Is it enough to just find them? Because we, we read that they were fined. Is there, is, was there any part of the act establishing the 2014 pension scheme to say for those who would default? Is it just fine? Is that enough? Well, I think at the moment where we are with the act is just is a fine. Is that enough? We'll see. I mean, eventually, obviously, a more draconian penalty would be that you put someone out of business. But I think if you look at the system as a whole, both the tax system and the pension system, I mean, I think companies, most companies have recognized that if they don't come into line with that, they're not going to be in business in two or three years. So I understand a lot of companies have been pressured and they've been delayed a bit. But in general, the direction of travel is better and better compliance. Now, the pension asset is growing. We've seen that, according to a report from your company, the contributor base is over $25 billion at the moment. And we're looking at that amount, 5.1 trillion. 5.7 trillion. 5.7 trillion. Okay, 5.7 trillion Naira. Now, is this money safe? <laughs> well, I think, I mean, I have to say, I think the pension scheme, the way the pension scheme is set up here is one of the best things that Nigeria has. I mean, if you look at the, the PFA structure, you have four uh, pension fund custodians. They're all high quality. I mean, the PFAs are not keeping your assets. The custodians are. They're all blue chip companies. It's very, very well regulated. Up until now, 70% of the assets are held in government securities. The numbers of people in the plan have grown to more than 7 million. As we said, the 5.7 trillion Naira in assets. People see every uh, uh, month what they have that's available for their pension. And I think we're just going to see this get more and more successful because there's a few things going on. One is that as more people come into the scheme, as you get returns and as you make more contributions, the 5.7 trillion gets much, much bigger. And if you look at the, as I said, 70% of these assets are held in government securities. Well, the total amount of federal government securities is only 10 trillion. So actually, the pension schemes are driving uh, and able to finance the government, the government deficits. Now, mm -hmm. What is the impact of that? Well, one impact is Traditionally in this country, a lot of banks have made money by just buying government securities and collecting deposits. But that's going to become more and more difficult for them because, because the pensions are going to have the government securities. So the banks are going to have to lend to the private economy, and that's fantastic. More, if we bring more people into it, 7 million now, it's going to be 10 million. The states have to bring in their employees. They're thinking about how to bring in 40 million people in the informal sector. And at the end of the day, that's going to be the biggest pool of capital this, this country has. So we talk about issues around power. We talk about issues about infrastructure. How do we invest in those sectors? Well, ultimately, it's going to have to come largely from the pension assets. So mm. there's a lot of thinking to go through how to take that step by step. But what I think that PENCOM and the country have done very well 
is they haven't rushed into this. They've made sure people's money is safe. They're not taking steps to put risk into the system except very, very slowly. So I, I think it's a fantastic success in Nigeria. Mm. But what, what will you make of the fact that some state governments who which have not been paying salaries for months, for some months, and of course, obviously, it would not have remitted the pensions of the workers. How do you think this can be addressed, going by the challenges in the economy? Well, I think that we're really at an inflection point in Nigeria, just beyond the pension issue, the whole economic structure is having to change in a very difficult, wrenching way. So before there was enough oil surplus, it was distributed through the economy, states had large budgets. Those days are, are gone. I mean, even if oil comes up a little bit, it's like not going to go back to 100. And there's more and more people anyway to support. So the big issue for the states is they have to figure out where they fit into the economic system. Some states are doing a terrific job on it. Obviously, Lagos is in a great position because it, it's not really reliant on, on, on oil. So for the states, it's a bigger issue than just the pensions. It's, you know, what, are, what is their economic future? Uh, I think the federal government's done a good job at helping them transition through this with some of their support programs but you know they're also demanding something from the states more transparency an economic plan a budgeting system so all of these things i think are going to put more and more discipline into the states but i think the reality is that states that don't have an economic plan are just going to be left behind states that have a good governor and a good administration and figure this out will be fine and then they'll come back with their their pension contributions where do you think that some of this money should go into the pension contributions should go into because you talked about the fact that the the private sector need to be involved in this investment has to go into the economy to be able to drive growth and of course preserve this money but are there specific areas that we should consider well i think the biggest area is obviously power mm -hmm. so we at pwc have said and many others for the last three or four years the single biggest thing holding back the economy is power um, the power privatization to date has not worked everyone realizes that there needs to be more capital the pension funds have the capital now the question is how do we inject that capital in a way that keeps the pension holders safe? Because we're not here to take their money and you know, lose it the way that the money was lost the first round of the privatization. So I think PENCOM's being caught. They recognize this. They're being cautious. The federal government's being cautious. But there is discussion about how to tap into this 5.7 trillion naira to help restructure the power industry. If that could be done successfully, then we'll be on a much better trajectory. So the issue of confidence is very important now in terms of how this money's are spent well, or think, invested. Well, I think the thing that has been so successful with this program is people feel their money is safe. They, you know, it's with the custodian, 70% is in government security, so they know at least they'll get their return. There's been some, some is allowed in equity, but overall people have got their return. So whatever reforms go in terms of where you can invest these funds, they have to go slowly and keep that confidence that people are still going to get returned. Nothing will destroy the program faster than you contribute for 20 years and then you get to your uh, pensionable age and there's nothing there. But mm. so far, the PENCOM has done a fantastic job of managing that. But if they can now transition to somehow use these funds in the power industry in a way that benefits the country but also benefits the pension holders, that will be fantastic. Okay, just before I let you go, uh, Dr. Nevin, uh, there is the drive to do some kind of financial inclusion uh, in the pensions market. Pencom says it plans to introduce what is called a micro-pension scheme to capture the informal sector of the economy to boost the nation's pensions asset. How do you think this should be uh, done? Well, I think... Again, if they can do this, it, it will be fantastic for the country. If you can bring in 10, 20 million more people in the informal sector, their savings is now in the financial system, can be used beneficially. I do think that the government is going to have to step in with some kind of subsidy to kind of encourage people to enter the program. Subsidy? Uh, <laughs> a, a small subsidy okay. just to bring people in, and? to subsidize some savings okay. at the low end if your pension's below a certain amount. But the other thing is if once people enter the micro pension market, they're also going to be in the payments market, the potentially micro loans. So it's going to open up all of the micro, uh, you know, kind of microfinance area. So this is something the government should also be with PENCOM pushing very hard on. Okay, Dr. Andrew Nevin, advisory partner and chief economist at Price Waterhouse Coopers. Thank you so much for You're coming welcome. on the program. You're welcome. We'll go on a break now, and when we we'll return, we will be taking you to the equities market. Rotsumi Fakir will be joining us on the program. Please stay with us. <laughs>